Well, now that we've got persistent power, more or less, it's time to think about some things that require persistent power. And I don't mean a refrigerator. We're looking at ways to secure the front door. This has always caused me some consternation because I was never quite sure how best to do it. Originally, it had this air cylinder hooked up to the air system and you push a button on the dashboard and it would close the door. Now, when we bought Magnolia, it worked. It was still a little bit sketch. Plus the fact that we're in and out of this bus constantly and we haven't actually started the engine in probably, oh, months. So having to use that system just doesn't work for us. There is a lock here, as you can see. That lock the cylinder turns this lever, which then slides this rod and this rod in opposite directions and pulls this little pin through this little hole right here and locks it into an opposing hole on the frame of the bus. A very simple system. There's also one up here at the top, a knob that attaches to this that then does the same thing. And you can see if I sort of twist that, you see how that works. We don't want to change the door. I kind of like this door, but also it's got a curve in it. And we had originally thought, well, we'll put some hinges on this side and we'll just have it hinge out. There's not a whole lot of frame here to do that with. We've got this solid hinge right here. This door comes out and I kind of like it. Let's work with that. So how to make use of these little holes that go into these little spaces here. I jury rigged this thing with electrical wire to try and keep it in just to get us to Oklahoma from Oregon. There are times when I'm at a truck stop, I want to lock this up so I can go inside and have a bite to eat, you know, spend some time with my family. It worked up until probably a couple weeks ago and frankly I don't trust that key we've broken so many of the original keys that came with this bus that I actually replaced the ignition because the key broke off couldn't get it out so I had to replace the whole ignition cylinder so I want to get rid of this system altogether I want to go for a completely wireless keyless system I'm gonna try this today is proof of concept if I could even get it set up we're gonna make an effort let me show you we ordered this from Amazon brain box key fobs simply a lock and an unlock nothing fancy we have four actuators. I, I'm not convinced these are called actuators. I think the word, they are, they do actuate, but it's not like a linear actuator. I think they're referred to as solenoids. Words, man, they're everywhere. Comes with a pretty decent wiring description and the harness is already set up. Plug that into the brain box, plug these into the corresponding solenoids and provide some power. Robert's your mother's brother. If we could somehow rig that up, so the solenoid would activate these rods and the one down there, although I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to dig that out. That's what I'm doing today. Oh, an extra little thing. The, uh, it's a little bit over cast today we probably won't get much solar but I've been uh, the solar panels have been disconnected now for probably about a couple of weeks because I've been working on in the bay and uh, the Yanni Afi machine is there but it's not plugged into the solar panels coming up because I had to run I was running some wires we have been using uh, Big Blue 2 here on the passenger side and it's down to I think about 85 let me take a look 88 percent we've been we've been multi-tooling and angle grinding and drilling and all that sort of thing and it's only down to 88 percent which is pretty good I'm really surprised how how little wattage those power tools actually take compared to say the vacuum or uh, even a box fan. So, yeah, I'm impressed. So let's turn this on. We have AC power. Now I got to get to some angle grind. There's a couple of screws there. I'm going to take those off first. Always take the screws off first. Interesting. Whatever it is, we don't need it. Wiring loom that goes into the thing is right here. Hey there, big fella. This wiring is not going to work anymore. So my thought is, since this is coming off and it's not ever going back in, I'm just going to cut it out in pieces. Well, I have access now to this lower mechanism completely, which I'm quite stoked about. Although trying to figure out where to install the solenoids may be a bit difficult. I wonder if double-sided tape will do it. You know, some of that really good, strong 3M stuff. Okay, let's not scratch the paint, Patrick. This is the switch for the air cylinder. Don't need that. All right, I'm gonna have to cut this out. We can probably cut this whole thing out. Although, if I leave a little lift, it might be giving me something to attach the, uh, the solenoid to. So let's just cut a little bit here. I wonder if I can get that out. All right, let's just cut it out. When in doubt, angle grinder. You can attach it to this, maybe. Maybe have it on a bit of an angle. I don't know. This is in the way. I gotta take this out. Do not 
lose that. That was garbage. There's no sense in trying to install the solenoids if the deadbolts, the cylinders, won't slide in to the receiver. Looks like it's got an awfully big space there, but when I try to do it, you know, see if I can show you. See if this will work. So that's the door closed. I can put a little bit of pressure on it to pull it in, but I don't want to be yanking on it just to get this in here. I shouldn't have to really force it just to get this to go through this hole here to the outside and into the receiver. Now, I don't know if you can see this. I'm yanking on it pretty good and it's still not going in. That's just not going to work for me. I need this to go into that hole and slide into this receiver. I know there's a word for it. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. You know why? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. If this has got to slide easily and stay there, I want to be able to walk up to the bus from however far away, take out my little key fob, go ka -ching, and have those things slide out nice and smooth as... Make up your own metaphor. And this isn't going to work. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to figure out where they're getting stuck at. Because I suspect this was always a problem for this bus. But it can't be for me. I'm going to take some tape. I'm going to put it over the receiver and see if I can't figure out where it's getting hung up, where this pin is hitting. And where it's hitting, I'm going to remove some material. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let's close it in. Yeah, okay. I might be able to do something with that. I'm only worried about doing it here right now, in the middle. If I can put two bars on either side in the middle, that should be enough to secure it. I mean, I've been securing it with just the ones in the bottom for the longest time, so... These receiver plates are plastic. They kind of look like painted metal, but they're just plastic. If I if I pull it in, like like if, if it closes, it still sticks. If I yank it in a little bit, not with all my force, it goes in. You know what I think? I think that this was meant to be locked with the air cylinder pulling it in at a certain tension. Because if you just let it loose, there's quite a bit of play in here and quite a bit of daylight. So maybe it's just, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Put a little tension there, slides in, slides out. Might be able to bring this one down a little bit. It's still got a lot of tension when this locks and I'm not sure the so <laughs> sure the solenoid will manage with that. I've kind of reconciled myself to the fact that we may just be stuck having to push a little bit on the door to get it to lock and unlock just because I believe the uh, the original design of this was for the air system to give it a nice little tug nice and tight before they actually locked it. So that that is going in just fine. That's nice. I'm, I'm not yanking on this much. Well, once I let go, it's in there tight, but if I just pull on it a little bit, I will see, not much. These are just misaligned. Or, this is more likely, over 24 years, the door has settled down a little bit. But anyway, that seems to be working. It's never easy. These rods have these little tiny plastic pieces. Some of them are broken or degraded. This one seems to be okay. And I've got a couple more right here. This one's broken. This one actually looks probably like it's in pretty good shape. Now these hold the pins on the rods. Pin goes this way and the rod might do that. It might do that. That's, that's technical language. So I've got another one here. And if all I'm worried about is the, the middle locking mechanism, then I can cannibalize the lower end for its rod and its uh, little plastic bits. So that one goes in there, and this one goes in here. It's locked. I think this might work. If I can attach the, uh, the solenoids to this little ledge here. No, no, I'm gonna show you. What's up? <laughs> Locked myself in. All right, so you see this pin goes in there. That pin goes in there. These rods come down here, and they, they sort of cross. Let me get a solenoid and uh, kind of mock it up a little bit and show you what I'm thinking. So if we put this, let's put this over. In here, so we have one over here, and we can put another one behind it. And I can hook it up to this rod with just a with just a clamp. It's got a clamp in it. So open, close. The other one will go right here and be clamped onto this one. I don't think they will interfere with each other. They do kind of cross a little bit there, and, and if there's friction, I don't know what'll happen. I don't know. Should I should I cut them? I kind of think I should cut them. Yeah, but where? There are actually four solenoids in this system, which is why there are some wires here, extra wires on this one. There's a master solenoid. This one delivers power to the other four. Uh, it's ground. Yeah, so there's four. One for itself. I don't know how it works. Anyway, there's four. <laughs> this one is the master one. So this one's got to be here. Kind of figured out where we're going to put things. Going to see if I can get these solenoids attached to these brackets and then uh, get them working. And then we're going to hook up the rods and see if I can get that to work. I know we're going to have to be put a little pressure on this to uh, to get it to actually lock, but uh, yeah, that's just the nature of the biz. All right, let's see if I can do that. Okay, well, it's going in. That actually looks pretty good. Solidly attached. Time to consult the wiring diagram. So we're going to give this 
a test. Got my Bluetti EB38, uh, which I'm gonna wire up to, uh, to provide me with some 12 volt power. This also has the ability to be plugged into um, or wired up to your turn signal lights so that when you use the locks, the turn signal lights will flash. We aren't going to be using that feature. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the fuse for that. Figure out which one is that. This is the pink wire. This is the one that goes to the directional lights. Pull that fuse so there's no power coming through these and don't have live wires hanging there. These are going to the rear ones, so we don't need those. Get those separated. These ones we don't need. I don't wanna cut this because I might use it later. So let's just a zip tie them together for now these connect to the master and there's another pit down there that go to the thing so it's very straightforward so where's the brain box there we go connected to the brain box which we will eventually be mounting in here probably with some double-sided tape some of that super 3m super tape but for the time being you are going in here there we go let's trace you back here all right what do we got here we've got that white brown there's a couple more and green. where does that go this is for the master solenoid so we're going to plug that in as is blue there's my green green oops wait a sec brown white and black which is the ground okay i am not sure what this is it's another white one comes out of here when in doubt check the wiring diagram ah this white is meant to go to a manual uh, button which we will be using so power, very simple, red and black. Straightforward. Red's got a fuse, what is it? It's a 20 amp fuse. It's an awful big fuse for a little thing like this. We're not going to be twisting these together with the red and black. We're gonna use a Wago wire knot for these. So. These are skinny little wires. Why there's a 20 amp fuse on those tiny little wires, I don't know. Wagos. You only need the doubles, so that should do. This is red, that goes with you. This is black, and this goes with you. Now this is very straightforward. This is just a, um, a 12 volt cigarette plug lighter, which plugs right into my EB3A. I had this thing sitting on the dashboard uh, all the way from Portland. And this powered my brake lights, the cameras. Yeah, this was great. And I had a little solar panel, charged this one up just fine. And it was great, what a treat. And all I did was I plugged a cigarette lighter like this into it. And then uh, there's a little 12 volt DC fuse block right here behind me that I wired everything up to. All right, we are powered. Oh, well, what do you know? It takes about 30 watts. Here's the thing. The solenoids are meant to be hooked up to the little, you know, the button at the top of a the door. These ones will be hooked up to the, the, the pins that go through here. So when it's extended, the fob is using the, the lock key is when it brings it in, which would be basically unlocking this door. Well, we'll manage, I think. Ah, look at that. I can take a little video and send it to Jamie. She's gonna be thrilled. We're gonna unplug this right now. Turn this off. So that works. I'm impressed. Now, I can put the um, the brain box right here. The power wires can come up through here. There's a channel here where the old wires used to go, and that'd be perfect. Right now, we gotta get the, um, what are they called? The rods. I knew I'd get it. Unhook this right now. Everything works. Not a fan of these connectors. Once they're in, I will probably never be taking them apart again. Gonna, gonna have to cut that. Now, how does this work? This goes through there. This then attaches to there. We're gonna start these screws before we put the clamp on. Save me a lot of headaches. Work smarter, not harder. There we go. All right. Look at that. So far, so good. Now here comes the real test. Okay, pull this in. Look at that. Pull it in. Oh my God, it actually works. I'm so excited. I gotta, I, I, I gotta do another video for Jamie. She's gonna love this. <laughs> it works. If we want this to work regularly, We've got to run it back to the, um, the AC300 in the utility bay. I've got some more Anchor 12.2 cable. I wonder if that would reach. I've got lots left for that. Yeah, I can bring it in here 
and then down through, oh, perfect. The wire will eventually, all, of, all the wires, most of them, will come down this aisle. And I'm not sure where it will come in. I'm thinking probably right over there and then in here, but I know it's gonna come down here. So let's bring it under here. There's my cutters. Oops, sorry. This is the power wire. I'm gonna run it up here, and I'm wondering if the brain box could go here, and then these wires could just come down here, and then I could, yeah, there's a little bit more space there for that. Let's try that. Well, it's not pretty, but it'll do the job. Brain box will plug into that and stick here with some two-sided tape, and uh, power's connected. I am going to eventually attach these to this. Comes up through here, and it terminates here in a couple of Wigo connections that are then plugged into the power for the brain box, which will be sitting right here and plugged into this harness. The power and control wires for the actual solenoids come up here. I didn't want to cut any wires. They're very long, but I didn't want to cut and reconnect. It works. Ah, I think that's good for today. The only thing I can do now is uh, clean up and go home because I've still got to solder that connection for the DC fuse block to work. And I'll do that at home because that's where all my soldering is. This is going to be great. I'm very, ex I'm very excited. And we will see you when it's finished or before then. I don't know. We'll see. Ciao.